Hello, this is Lisa Phillips from Video Blogging for Bigger Pockets. Today's episode is upgrades versus capital improvements that you should or shouldn't make in your low end rental properties. This is part two of a series I call, Just Because I'm Not Going to Live There, Sets. Uh, the second one will focus on more specific items that you should really think about improving or replacing when it comes to your rental property, uh, when it is in a low income neighborhood, and why or how you should think about it. Um, just first to preface before I get into individual items, I think if you're going to say I'm not going to live there, it should only apply to upgrades but not capital improvements in low-income neighborhoods. And this is very important. And I will always caveat anything as a rental property owner, uh, investor, you should always be thinking about long-term uh, maintenance costs and always lowering them or making it so you're not having to pay for this again on the back end anytime soon. So when it comes to say old, barely functioning windows, I would say that is something that should be replaced. Even if you're not going to live there, there's a lot of different things. You don't have to buy a high-end one, but not only does it make the uh, place look a lot nicer, because windows are very telling about the quality of the renovation you put into your rental property, but it also minimizes lead complaints for the future that you're not going to have to worry about, uh, water seepage into your building, and the longevity of your investment. So not only does it help the tenant have uh, functioning, easy, beautiful windows, but it also protects your, protects your investment for the longevity of it. You know, and nowadays a lot of the windows have lifetime warranties. I would say you would do this in a low-income uh, neighborhood if you have windows that haven't been replaced in 20, 15, 30 years, which a lot of the times in lower income neighborhoods they have not. The homeowners just haven't gotten to it. I would say that isn't something you go just because you would live there you're not going to do it because if you keep those crappy windows in not only is it not protecting your investment you will have long-term costs um, and you will be paying for these costs on the back end as one by one they just cause way more headaches than they were especially if you have to worry about lead paint and the and the like um, when it comes to roofs uh, this should probably be obvious but in a lot of these low-income neighborhoods it's very hit or miss if the roofs have been replaced it's the last thing most homeowners in these areas have done because it costs a lot of money but I would say if you're looking at the roof and it looks like it's going to give you any problems within the next two to three years um, even five years I would just replace it not only does it protect your investment but leaking roofs are not okay with your tenants if you do have leaking roofs you might get a great tenant that's going to leave early because you won't fix the roof and I say replace versus repair because replacing is only something that we add it up and you do it every single year Will, you'll pay more than the cost of just replacing it up front. I don't think that should be a, I'm not gonna live there, I'm not going to do it, because you always have to not only think about the tenant, but even more so above that, the longevity of your investment. And when you get a roof, you're not gonna get all that water damage that does cost so much money and does so much internal damage, not just with mold, but with the structure um, for a long-term, worry-free, warm, non-leaky, rental property, which is going to make your tenants very happy. So it's definitely you get more out of it than what you put in. Uh, third, your HVAC system. If you have an HVAC system that works, great when you get that old rental property. Um, do you need to improve it? Well, if you're in there and to your satisfaction, it works very well, go ahead and do it. But if you know when you're there and it doesn't really work or it blows too hot or too cold, why don't you consider investing in the new unit even though it is a pricier um, capital improvement, it, those things that you buy now that may not have been replaced in 20 years will probably last even longer than the ones in the past because technology has gone a long way because I've purchased a couple of them. I've had really absolutely no issues with the newer ones. So all the technology that goes into it just helps defray long-term maintenance costs as I've had um, really no issues at all with any new HVAC unit I have purchased and that's all been since 2009 so the technology makes it so it's way better in the future so if yours work perfectly fine keep it but if you know it's causing you problems a hundred percent change it even if it is in a low-income rental or a low-income neighborhood that you didn't pay much for the purchase price because remember it's not always about the price it's maintaining this cash cow or this cash flowing um, property that 
um, will pay for itself over and over with high cash flows for how low you purchase the asset price. And this last one I'm going to discuss on today, uh, I'm not going to live there so I'm going to leave the cheaper vinyl versus upgrading to tile. Now upgrading to tile is an upgrade, however I would think for, I'm saying for rental properties, I would highly recommend it even if you're not in low income neighborhoods, but especially if you are, I would highly recommend upgrading to tile. Vinyl is the cheapest thing you can get at any of the big box stores and that's to purchase and to install. I'm talking about a couple hundred dollars. However, it does wear not as well as tile. It does not wear, um, it scuffs, it stains, it rips up at little corners that you're going to have to constantly replace. So it's definitely a good thing to do. Um, this is something where you're, if you say, I'm not going to live in it, that's okay. Um, to not do necessarily an upgrade from vinyl to tile. However, I would just recommend it. So I think in that one case, it's probably okay. And in some few others, you definitely um, can get away with that and not necessarily have a really bad tenant experience or not have it really um, cause any type of long-term um, maintenance costs. But just on your own, I would say go ahead and do it just because it defrays the type of work you'll have to do. It's long lasting, it's low maintenance. Since I put them in any of my rentals, I've had no troubles with the tile work. It's great, it lasts forever. And I would just suggest it just because not only does it glam the place up for a relatively low cost, because you can get a bathroom or kitchen done for about four to $500 per floor. It doesn't have to be that much by very experienced tilers. Um, but I would think it's just worth it just because of how um, the two for one you get from the upgrade look, a relatively low price to get it installed, as well as the long lasting maintenance call. So this was part two of the series of I, I wouldn't live there. Uh, so I'm not going to pay for this or that and I just wanted to say in some cases regardless of what neighborhood it's in those thoughts as a new investor really should enter your mind and you really should start thinking more strategically about what you're going to do not based on what neighborhood or what type of people will live there but more as for the longevity of your property and the long defrayed um, or lowered long-term maintenance costs that you will get. And it's a different conversation and a different mindset, but if you protect and treat your investment really well, regardless of who's going to live there, you or someone else, trust me, you're going to get something on the back end and the return on investment for that mindset because you're gonna be more strategic about what you put in there to maintain your investment for 10, 20, or 30 years. So this is Lisa Phillips, video blogging for Bigger Pockets. Thank you very much.